It is 10 p.m. Thursday across the Cook Islands on this 24th of January, and we are still closely monitoring Tropical Cyclone Gary approaching from the northwest. You can see the latest forecast from the Fiji Meteorological Services, and they take the storm more toward the southeast and slowly weakening down to a Category 2, but a Category 2 is still a very formidable tropical cyclone, and their latest track still takes the center just barely to the east of the island of Aitutaki, but this would still bring the storm close enough to where you will still experience fairly strong winds, so you definitely want to brace for that, and also if you happen to live in a storm surge prone location, you may want to consider moving to higher ground if that is a very common threat across the island. Also within the next couple of days, the forecast still takes the storm just to the east of Rarotonga now, but even if this were to follow the track 100%, the storm would still pass close enough to where you will still experience squally conditions. You are also on the western fringe of the Cone of Error, so you still want to monitor the storm very closely, as the storm could still deviate a little more toward the west. But as of right now, the center is still forecast to track between Mangaya and Moke, and this is somewhat concerning for Moke, as I know that some of those structures are self-constructed, and I know that they're not made very well. So hopefully we can get away without experiencing much in the way of significant wind damage there but due to the structures and the way that they're poorly built i do have some concerns for interest there so if you happen to know anyone that lives on that island or is traveling there please make them aware fairly soon that you will be experiencing cyclone conditions and hopefully they will be able to hunker down as much as they possibly can as we lose the daylight we start to transition from the visible satellite animation on over to the enhanced infrared and you can see that down toward the south near Rarotonga, the weather is still fairly tranquil. There's really still not much in the way of cloud cover this evening. But as we move more toward the north, I'm sure that conditions out across some of the remainder of the Cook Islands are beginning to go downhill. Nothing is overly significant just yet, but the cloud cover along with the showers and isolated and occasionally heavy showers and storms are starting to spread over the Cooks. And as we can see on the latest enhanced infrared, the good news is that we are not seeing that well-defined eye that we were fearing was going to become even more apparent because earlier today on the visible satellite animation, the storm looked like it was continuing to intensify and an eye was starting to show up not only on the microwave but also on the visible satellite imagery. But we are not seeing that so much this evening. If anything, it looks like the storm may have peaked earlier this afternoon and is now slowly on a weakening trend. But nonetheless, as you can see clearly, we still have very intense rainfall and winds coming in from the northwest, and as we overlay the latest forecast from the Joint Typhoon Warning Center, the storm is still following the forecast track. Regional water vapor imagery also shows the poleward outflow channel spreading over the islands, so the cloud cover and rainfall is moving in, and we can see the reason why the storm is now starting to curve more toward the southeast. The tropical cyclone is well embedded within this strong mid to upper level northwest flow, and eventually this flow is going to become more north to south, so that gradual turn toward the south is going to become more apparent within the next day as well. Now, what is the reason why the tropical cyclone is starting to weaken? Well, it's almost the same reason why the storm is beginning to make that southerly turn. We have moderate to strong vertical wind shear as being shown by the streamlines on this chart, so that is helping to really disrupt the western semicircle and northwest quadrant of the tropical cyclone. So over time, the convection is going to become more lopsided to the southeast of the center of circulation, and that does not bode well for Gary because, of course, these tropical cyclones like to be much more symmetric. And as the storm continues to slide more toward the south, the wind shear values are only set to increase even more. So this is the reason why, over the past two to three days, as you've been tuning in to the latest updates from 28storms.com, we have not been expecting a significant cyclone landfall across the Cook Islands because we were anticipating the vertical wind shear to really ramp up and disrupt the tropical cyclone, but the disruption has been a little delayed and a little slower than we anticipated. But nonetheless, we could have been dealing with much more than a Category 2, so thankfully we only have a marginal to moderate at best in terms of strength tropical cyclone moving through. So the wind damage should not be all that major, but again, I do have some concerns for those poorly constructed homes in some of the smaller islands to the northeast of Rarotonga. So as we work our way into the latter half of tomorrow afternoon, based on the latest ECMWF model depiction, it has the center of the tropical cyclone passing either over or just to the east of Aitutaki, with the strongest winds associated with the storm being east of the center, which is good news if the storm passes over or just to the east of the island. But either way, you are still looking at at least sustained winds of 30 to 40 knots. Now as we head on into Friday afternoon and more so Friday night, you can see the peak of the tropical cyclone continuing to move toward the south. And if we rewind this for just one moment, 
And as we remove the overlay so that you can gain a better bearing as to where we are looking at, this is Rarotonga, and here is Moke along with some of the smaller islands to the northeast. And as we place the model graphic back into play here, you can see the smaller islands being battered by at least sustained winds in excess of 35 to 40 knots with gusts a little higher than that. So again, those poorly constructed homes will be facing potentially very strong north-northwesterly winds. So do be ready for those winds to be coming in over the next 24 to 36 hours. And it looks like Rarotonga will escape the worst of the storm, but I would not be surprised if some residents there experienced occasional power outages and minor wind damage as well. So that sums up the latest Cyclone Gary update from 28storms.com. Please continue to follow us for more Cyclone-related information. And we wish everyone in the Cook Islands the best of luck as the Cyclone passes through. As long as you remain hunkered down, you should be A-OK. -okay. And only if you can do this safely or after the storm, please send us any pictures or video or news information from that area as exclusive news is hard to come by. And I'm sure that our followers would love to hear some input as to how the islands fared during the storm. But that is all. Thanks for tuning in, and we will see you here again soon.